An entitled Karen demands that I give my Nintendo Switch to her demon child while we're on a flight, but after I kindly say no, she freaks out on me and makes a scene. This just happened the other day, and after sharing the story with my friends and family, a few of them suggested I share this online. The scene is a Southwest airline flight. I was sitting in a window seat next to two lovely ladies, and directly horizontal from us was an empty seat, a mom and her son. The flight was taking off. For those who don't know, you are required to stay in your seat and keep your seatbelt on for the beginning of the flight until the captain says otherwise. I was strapped in my seat and decided to take out my Nintendo Switch from my carry-on beneath my feet. Excuse me, ma'am? I didn't realize it at first that the mother in the seats horizontal from me was trying to get my attention. She unbuckled her belt and moved to the empty seat by the aisle closer to me. Ma'am, with the video game? I lifted my head, but the stranger next to me nudged me as well. They told me that the lady wants to get my attention. So I turned my head to see this woman leaning across the aisle with her hands on the armrest of the aisle seat in my row. Sorry, she began. I just wanted to know if there's any way that my son could use that game for a little while. I was a little confused that she would even ask this, but I said, oh, I'm so sorry. My Nintendo Switch is actually really important to me. I don't feel comfortable giving it to anyone I don't know. I don't even let my sisters play with it. I was going to continue from here, but the woman cut me off. She says, oh, my son's not like most kids. He's not destructive. His cousin has one of those and he knows how to play it. She smiled and put her hand out expectingly. The two women seated next to me looked at me as if they were also in disbelief. I said again, I'm sorry, I just don't feel comfortable. I brought it for me. Visibly upset, this woman in a huff says, how old are you? She said this condescendingly and retracted her hand, slapping it on her leg as if she's frustrated. I told her that I'm 25, even though that doesn't matter with the situation. At this point, I was growing exceptionally uncomfortable. She began sounding very agitated at this point as she said, well, my son is eight. This is an hour and 45 minute flight and he just wants something to do. He can't see it for a few minutes. I tell her, no, I am not comfortable with that. I'm sorry, but I'm expecting you to understand since this is my property. I put my head down and I unpause my game as to ignore anything she had further to say. At this point, she was genuinely livid. Are you serious? She then addresses her kid and says, well, sorry, buddy. Not everyone knows how to share. The woman said this to her kid sitting next to her. Her child started whining and kicking the seat in front of him. Thanks for this, she said to me. A sweet kid just wants to share with you and you're being ignorant about it. Before I even opened my mouth, one of the ladies in my row snapped back at her. They asked her, how dare you bring that kind of energy on this plane? This lady backed me up too, saying that I was very kind about saying that I don't want to give my electronics to a stranger and that it made me uncomfortable. But this entitled Karen was not having it. She actually said, um, she's an adult and can't share with a kid for a few minutes of a nearly two hour flight. The woman in my row responded and said, you should have brought something for him to do then. And that actually shut her up for good. At the end of the flight, the woman collected her luggage from the overhead bins, looked at me and said, I hope you're happy going against God's word, not sharing with a child. Some of the people around us giggled like small children. I'm sure that they overheard the drama at the beginning of the flight. I've come across some entitled Karens in my life, but this strange lady definitely took the cake. Why is it that stuff like this never happens when I'm around? It is like my dream to watch this all go down. This was hilarious. This entitled Karen actually wanted this original poster to give them their Nintendo Switch just so their stupid gremlin child could have something to do on the flight. Like, I'm sorry, that's not anybody's fault except for that terrible Karen parent. And the fact that they tried to guilt trip them no matter what is further evidence that this lady does this all the time. You can bet she pulls the Karen card and uses her kid as a weapon to try and get whatever she wants under every circumstance. It's so totally unfair and it's absolutely ridiculous. Thankfully, everybody else had some common sense and came to this lady's defense. And I've been on those kinds of flights where you have that entitled brat sitting nearby and it's bad enough you gotta listen to them screaming and whining, but compound that by having some entitled Karen trying to boss you around and practically take your belongings. Like, I'm pretty sure that kid would have never given her back her Nintendo Switch and probably would have tried to lie and say, no, it's mine. So good for them for putting their foot down and telling this lady no, because sometimes these entitled Karens need to be put in their place and absolutely shut down. I finally meet my long distance boyfriend and I can't help but feel a little disappointed. I have been in a long distance relationship with my boyfriend, John, that's not his real name, for about a year now. We live on opposite sides of the country 
and I flew out to meet him in person a couple of weeks ago. Now, he is funny and kind, and we share a lot of the same opinions on things, and he's quite attractive. We don't have too much in common, except for both being on the artistic side, but that was never a big thing for me. As long as you put in effort and you communicate openly and get along well, I believe many relationships can work out. We have both sent pictures of ourselves and FaceTime before, so there was no chance of catfishing or anything like that. When I was going to meet him, I put on my nicest clothes I brought, a somewhat simple but nice top, some loose breathable slacks, a pair of plain flats, a sun hat, and I put on a little bit of eyeliner. It was a simple but elegant look, as my friend put it, who came with me on the trip. I was nervous but really excited to see him at the same time. I was keeping him updated on where I was so we could meet up, and he seemed like he was getting cold feet. He was telling me he didn't have enough gas to come meet me. For reference, it's about an hour drive for him. I offered to send him some money for the drive, which I did. He's actually asked me for gas money a couple of times and has yet to pay me back despite having a job. When he gets there, he has a t-shirt on and cargo shorts with boots that seem a bit too big for him. I don't think too much of it at the time, but in hindsight, I guess I felt overdressed. I don't know. We walk around for a bit and then we sit on a bench for a second because my legs were getting weak from how nervous I was. We hold hands for a little bit and after a while, he tries to kiss me on the lips. Now, I'll admit it. I haven't had my first kiss yet and I stopped him because I'm pretty sure I'd faint if we kissed and I didn't feel ready after meeting only a few minutes before. We sat holding hands for a little longer and got up and walked around. As we were walking around, I noticed his fingernails were much longer than mine and had dirt underneath them. I noted that he has a manual labor job, so that explains the dirt under the nails. After a while, he had to leave and we parted ways after a kiss on the cheek. Now I'm home and I'm not sure how I feel. This is the longest relationship I've ever had and I guess I feel, well, a little disappointed. Like something very wonderful would happen and instead I just felt okay. What should I do going forward after making this realization? I don't want to hurt his feelings, but I know if I bring it up to him, I'll word it horribly and do more damage than anything. I'm very new to relationships, so I'm not sure what I should do. I can totally understand where you're coming from. Meeting your online boyfriend or girlfriend for the first time would probably be a little bit shocking. I mean, you've never actually met this person, but still you have such an intense bond with them that you love them. So seeing them face to face for the first time is probably a little scary, if not a little bit underwhelming. I think the best thing about all of this, though, is that you have met him and now you know what to expect, especially if you decide to keep this relationship going. And here's the thing. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Like there's no way that you can try and force this and make it happen because that wouldn't be fair for yourself. And it especially wouldn't be fair for him either. Like if after this meetup, you still feel like, hey, I don't really like him anymore, then it is what it is. Being around someone physically really does make a difference when it comes to whether you like them or not. You can idolize and make this ideal person out of who you see online and you can spend hours with these people constantly. But in my opinion, until you meet them in person, you don't really know them that well. So hopefully this relationship still works out for you and hopefully you meeting him in person didn't completely throw you off because it sounds like you two have a good relationship together and it would be a shame for that to just get thrown away all because you finally met in person. I let a girl sit on my thigh and now my girlfriend is incredibly angry at me and I'm not sure what to do. I went to hang out with some friends at one of my friend's house and my girlfriend came along with us. There were like nine of us in total there and we were just talking, eating and drinking. After we played a drinking game, one of my friends was definitely under the influence and came over to where my girlfriend and I were sitting and cuddled and started talking to us. After talking for a bit, she wanted to sit and ask my girlfriend if she can sit on my leg. My legs were spread out in a V-shape. My girlfriend said okay for some reason and the girl sat on my left leg and had her arm around me to hold herself up. My girlfriend looked pretty upset by this girl who was very drunk at the time and it wasn't like I could just kick her off my leg and have her on the ground. We were talking for like five more minutes but my girlfriend sounded very angry and that's when she said that she's going to go throw up from the alcohol and went off to the bathroom. I got up and seated the girl on the chair I was sitting on and went to go check on her. She wasn't throwing up but told me that we were going home. So we walked back out to where everyone else was and my girlfriend announced that we were leaving. When we got out I ordered an Uber to drop us off at her apartment. When we were waiting for the Uber, she wasn't talking to me and when I tried to talk to her, she would respond angrily and make a weird remark. When I asked her what she was upset about, she said it was obvious. I asked if it was the girl sitting on my leg and she said yes. I was so confused because she said the girl can't sit on my lap. I asked her why she said the girl could sit on my lap and then she said it's not like she could have said no. Personally, this doesn't make sense to me as to why she couldn't say no to this girl sitting on my lap.
lap. Like, how am I supposed to know that this is not allowed? So I told her that she's blaming me for no reason. When we were in the Uber, she yelled at me in front of the driver and started crying. When we got to her apartment and walked in, she told me to sleep on the floor with no blanket and no pillows. I said I'd rather go home and sleep on my own bed. Then I walked out of her apartment and went to my own. It's the next morning now and she hasn't responded to any of my text messages. I don't want another miscommunication error, so I want to talk to her face to face, but she's not responding. I'm not sure what to do. Was I in the wrong for letting this girl sit on my lap, even though my girlfriend said it was okay? Who's at fault here? What should I do? I think you're both at fault. Both of you are complete idiots. Your girlfriend should have never said yes to this drunk lady sitting on your lap, and you should have never let that drunk lady sit on your lap ever, under any circumstance. Your girlfriend is literally sitting there right next to you. Why on earth would you let that happen? If anything, your girlfriend should have sat on your lap and the drunk girl sat on the other chair. That would have been best case scenario. But in that same vein of thought, the girlfriend then acting like this is your fault and solely your fault is completely ridiculous. In my honest opinion, both of you are the problem here. Both of you made an equally stupid decision and both of you are to blame for this situation going where it is. If a drunk girl came up to me, regardless of what my girlfriend said, I would absolutely 100% say, no, you're not sitting on my lap. I don't know who this chick is. I'm not interested in her. I'm interested in my girlfriend who's sitting right there. I'm not about to compromise that by letting some drunk chick sit next to me and cuddle up on me. No, thank you. And your girlfriend saying that she couldn't say no to this lady is the biggest cop out ever. If she actually had your best interest in mind with any intention of trying to protect her boyfriend, she would have said no on the spot. But she said yes, put her foot in her mouth and then tried to blame you, which is just not okay. But overall, both of you are equally stupid and you both need to figure out your stuff and grow up because allowing some girl to sit on your lap, whether your girlfriend stupidly said yes or not, is not okay. My husband wants me to keep my job for the benefits and I want to pursue my passion at my dream job that just opened up and I'm honestly not sure what to do. My husband and I have been married for a year and we were dating for three years prior to getting married when we met in college. During college, I was working multiple jobs to keep me afloat. My family is not in the picture. While in college, I landed one internship with an organization that I loved. I now work for that organization full time and I am not enjoying the work culture at all. The political games, the backstabbing co-workers and the overly into themselves poor management across the organization makes me literally sick. The job itself has great time off and decent health benefits as well as a flexible schedule. I love 50% of what I do but I feel as though I only get paid the bare minimum which might be standard for a nonprofit. While in college I also volunteered to work with students because I had no happiness in my life. The kids brought me joy and I thought graduating and landing a full-time job would make the world brighter but I'm miserable sitting behind a desk all day. A part-time teaching position came up recently, a job I think would check many boxes for me. My partner however does not want me to take it because my current full-time job offers great benefits that I would lose. Mind you we both met in college and I feel too young to be settling down at a bleak office job. My husband insists that I'm making my way towards becoming a leader and making change at the organization that I currently work for. Should I follow my dream and leave the plush full-time job or make responsible decisions based on my partner's thoughts? What should I do? This is a really tricky one because I can see both sides of this. On one hand, you really hate your full-time job, but there is some good benefits that come along with it. On the other hand, you have this dream job coming up, but it might not have the same benefits that your current job currently offers you. It's a really tricky place to be. The first thing I would personally look at would be if we can actually afford me switching jobs at the moment. It's great that your dream job opened up, like I'm really happy for you. But if your family finances cannot support you switching to a part-time position, when you've currently been enjoying a full-time position that pays you quite well from what it sounds like, it might not be the wisest decision off the bat to go, okay, let's quit my full-time job to get my dream job that pays significantly less. That could really make a dent in just about everything in your life. And I don't think you should completely ignore your partner's advice on this one. I think they want the best thing for you, but at the same time, they also want to make sure that you're both financially stable. That is really important to consider. And if you're just switching jobs simply because you found your dream job, then personally, you need to make sure you can afford that switch. And guess what? If you can afford that switch and this dream job will somehow make ends meet and it won't be a financial burden, then absolutely make the switch. Who cares what anybody thinks? Maybe if you lay everything out and show your significant other that yes, this can work for us, they might be more willing to let you take that step and they probably would be more supportive in the long run. So whatever you decide to do, I hope it works out for you. And I hope that whatever you decide 
decide to do, your significant other is there to support you. My partner is ending our relationship while I'm 34 weeks pregnant. I'm a 32-year-old female and my partner is 48 years old. He just told me today that he can't do it anymore. He says that he can't be in our relationship because he doesn't feel respected. The truth is, I just feel tolerated. We have the same thoughts about each other. If I think he's self-centered, he thinks the same about me. I haven't been able to work during the pregnancy. And while I'm receiving FMLA and unemployment, he goes out to work every day. I contribute to the household expenses and he contributes about 20% to the household duties. I pay the car note of the car he drives to make money. He got into a car accident that caused little damage, but I'm the one who is working with the companies for the repairs. We've had a broken toilet seat for months and he's done nothing to fix it. He washes the clothes once a month. We don't have a washer and dryer in our place and I can't carry the bags. The clothes need to be washed so bad. Three huge bags. And still, it's not getting done. I don't even have a dry towel. I literally sit in the house naked most days. I don't buy any summer clothing for my growing body because we have to save money, which I totally understand. But now I can't fit my pre-pregnancy summer clothes anymore. I clean the bathroom. I wash the dishes all the time. I do 75% of the cooking and I get government assistance with the food. But I also buy out of pocket. He buys out of pocket too. I also buy restaurant food because I don't want to cook all the time and it's blazing in our place and I don't want to stand on my feet and cook in the kitchen at this stage of my pregnancy. He conveniently doesn't eat restaurant food except he does especially when I'm buying it. I try to tidy up the rest of our place as much as I can but with no dressers or drawers or any place to put anything it's always looking messy which stresses me out. I don't make the bed every day which for most of this pregnancy is an air mattress. I finally broke and bought a mattress after thinking he would get one. I've said it to him for months. We need one because it's uncomfortable and hard for me to get in and out of the air mattress. This month, I had to help with rent. That's his responsibility and I didn't get the money for that back. But when he paid my phone bill because I didn't have it because I helped with the rent, he expected that back, which I did. He says he can't do it anymore because he's out working and he's hungry and I should have his meals ready for him. When I wake up after I do my morning routine, I should call him and tell him to come to breakfast. When he comes in from work at night, he shouldn't have to wait for his dinner. I've asked him to let me know when he's on his way so I can fix those things, but his response is to cook it anyway and to tell him to come and get it. He's also upset because I stream a lot of the day, sometimes just to have noise in the house. I don't talk to anyone, we don't go anywhere, I don't have any books to read, most of our things are in storage. I did crochet a top last week though, but that's about it. Recently he's been building his social media presence and needed a website to create products. I designed the website, the logo, the products, and everything while he makes videos and posts them on TikTok. He didn't like the website and I redid it. Nothing to be done with that yet, to be honest, but I'm sure something will come about it. When he had his other business ventures, I was there with him to do whatever I could. He wanted to start a restaurant. I was there creating the menu and coming up with a system to streamline everything. He stopped doing that because he got stressed out dealing with people. I just don't know how I feel right now. I think I'm just indifferent and I just don't care anymore. I'm also upset because I have this baby to take care of and I need a work from home job in order to provide. The plan has always been that I'll be a stay at home mom as we don't want the baby to be in daycare. I'm going to talk to my employer next week to see about going to work until my due date to at least be bringing in some income or suffer through doing Uber. I feel like I can't talk to my family about this because they don't like him at all and we've had problems all throughout our relationship and I'm sure they don't want to hear about this stuff anymore. I can't stay with my family because they all smoke and won't stop just because I'm pregnant. They are advocates for smoking through the pregnancy and I am not. My one sister lives in a one bedroom apartment and I can't bring my bed there. He says that he's finally getting his old car fixed that's been down for more than a year so I can do whatever I want. I worked in customer service and sales before this and would really want a work from home job doing anything I'm capable of in order to provide. I'm upset and I really don't know what to do. I think the person you're with is a complete scumbag. This guy is an absolute piece of garbage. You're about to have a baby and he wants to break up? He wants to end this relationship because he doesn't feel respected? I mean, how selfish can you get? From what's being described, this woman has done everything for this man. And he has the audacity to turn this around and make it about himself. What a piece of garbage. But honestly, this lady will be so much better without him. And it doesn't help that you have family that are not understanding and they've already written off this relationship as something that's never going to work out. So I honestly wish you the best and I hope things work out for the better. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on
on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And the next time you live stream, use the Cream of the Crop music. Search Cream of the Stream on Spotify or whatever platform you use for copyright-free music to use for your next stream.